Welcome to our video podcast. Normally, we do audio podcasts. Today, a video one. I'm John Whitehouse. I'm Angelo Carasone. From 2008central.net. We uh, just got back from the 100 Club Dinner in New Hampshire. This is a Democratic event that's uh, hosted every year, happens every year. Uh, this year, the presidential candidates spoke. Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Dennis Kucinich, and Bill Richardson. Um, you notice that I didn't mention John Edwards' name, and that's because he did not show up. Uh, his name was on the program. He was supposed to speak uh, along with the other candidates, but Dodd and Biden dropped out. And Edwards um, said not to participate in the event tonight. Uh, the ostensible reason that was reported earlier was because you know it was too much of a big wig, elitist event. Um, looking at the crowd was out there. That's certainly not the case. No, it was very young. It was very enthusiastic. Uh, very middle class. I'd well, say. Uh, that actually just to mention the crowd. Uh, there was about three thousand people in attendance. Uh, tickets range from about one hundred dollars. I think that was the general price. Uh, but I heard some people outside talking that they spent about five hundred dollars for the ticket. So I guess it depended on uh, how close you're sitting to the podium. Yeah, maybe that was. It part was the of size. It. it was greater than about the size of a soccer field, if you can imagine that. Um, With astroturf floor. Yes, which was uh, interesting. That's one word. Okay, <laughs> now um, the first the person we want to go to talk about a little bit is Edwards. Uh, he didn't show up there. He went on Oberman instead. Yep. I don't know if he did any other television programs. I don't know either. But... I, I, we did a quick internet search. That's all we could find before we put this up tonight. Um, and what we talked about was how the media wasn't giving a fair shake. Uh, I don't know how you know, he came ahead of Clinton. Why is Clinton still being named as the alternative to Obama if Edwards came in second? Uh, well, the first thing everyone would point out was that, um, you know, A, Clinton was running all along a national organization, yeah. national campaign. There, there was never any indication her campaign was dependent upon the early states the way Edwards admittedly said that his was. And not just admittedly. I mean, even in his own particular actions, he really followed up on those admissions. I mean, it wasn't just that he was playing up to Iowa to try to make them feel that he had a greater sense of you know importance or connection there. He actually acted on those words. He pulled yeah. staffers out of Nevada. He moved staffers in, from South Carolina into Iowa. I mean, he really ran bare-bones operations in states where he previously had some operation uh, to sort of really double down on, on Iowa. Yeah, absolutely. He had always won Iowa's he campaign in Iowa basically for six straight years, more or less. Constantly been there. Uh, had limited resources comparable, no matter how much he wants to deny it. Um, and he didn't win Iowa. Clinton had spent – he visited all 99 counties twice. Clinton visited like 61 counties. Right. No matter how you want to look at it, and Clinton got even got more delegates from Iowa. Yeah. Um, although it was com- comparative weighting something. But the difference – even their percentage was very small. And I think that the strength of organization, the strength of the candidacies, the national polls, everything shows that Clinton is the more viable national candidate. Sure. Ended. I mean I think that that's Same legitimate. I mean, I mean the, everyone knew that or at least even I think by Edwards' his own – I don't think they would admit it uh, – at least explicitly, but certainly by their own actions, they acknowledged that Iowa was a crucial part of their campaign. Oh, that absolutely. was what was going to catapult absolutely. them into sort of uh, a much more t- national viability. Mm-hmm. Uh, he came in second. Uh, his spin on it or his, his interpretation is that the overwhelming uh, amount of support that both he and Obama got uh, was actually a decision for change. And accordingly, uh, Hillary Clinton's out of it. And now the decision is between Obama and Edwards as to who's going to be the agent of change. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and he think- started his... There are real differences argument yeah. uh, yesterday, uh, and I imagine he'll continue that. Yeah, um, and I think that's they're both both Clinton and Edwards are Edwards is trying to attack Obama from the left. Uh, Clinton now seems to want to be attacking him from the right a little bit, a little bit, uh, which only to help Edwards or help Obama as he gets attacked on both flanks because he can but, make himself look like the moderate. Uh, but at the same time, uh, just stick with Edwards for a second here. Uh, it's hard to see how him allowing Clinton to get the spotlight and as the alternative yeah. really is going to help him in the end. Because yep. that's what happened tonight is that, if anything, uh, maybe he didn't have the network to get people out as many as Clinton did. But Clinton didn't have that many supporters there. She had a good amount. Mm, right. And I don't think Edwards would meet it. But it wouldn't be that – you know, if you get some excited kids or get some yeah. people – he could have made a good showing and at least gotten more enthusiastic support than Clinton. And, and, that's, and that's precisely what I, why I think it was sort of a poor strategic decision on his part, too. I mean, I understand that he sent Elizabeth Edwards as sort of a token. Um, but, one, you're backed out of an event that he had originally agreed to be to. So at that point, he's going to anger some particular people yeah. within the leadership. So that's never a good idea. When the when it's four days away, you have to be careful. Who you, that, yeah, who and this is the angry. cream of the New Hampshire yeah. Democratic Yeah, I mean, crop. yeah, these are the active people in the, in the party. These are the people that are going to be able to influence other people. They have an incentive to influence other people. 
people, their local legislators. I mean, mm-hmm. these people are the ones that are the movers and shakers within New Hampshire mm-hmm. uh, and certainly within the Democratic Party in New Hampshire. But that said, beyond that, I, I, after being there and experiencing the audience and sort of the roller coaster ride that they go on, uh, I realized that Edwards really squandered what would have been a good opportunity for him. The audience there was responsive to contrasting statements, very contrasting statements. I mean, Kucinich got up there in his speech, and along with other candidates who had said some other extremes, but Kucinich got up there and talked about the impeachment of Bush and the impeachment of Dick Cheney, which are legitimately strong and somewhat extreme statements to make. Yeah, and he got he got wild applause at the end of it. It was uh, one of the biggest applause of the lines of the night before uh, Obama took the stage. And I'd say then when Obama got up there, and even Clinton to some degree got sure. cheers for this. He talks about uniting the country and working with certain Republicans and getting things done. And then it was a powerful argument. People responded to that yeah. very well too. So it wasn't just, you know, I it wasn't I ideologically a very narrow group. It was a group that was very open to arguments. Yeah. You know, I'd say the traditional New Hampshire, how it's portrayed. Yeah. This is what John McCain is thriving uh, At on. the very least, the audience was uh, malleable. And I think that if for someone like John Edwards, who you know probably doesn't put on a stronger performance as Barack Obama does in terms of the overall presentation and emotions involved there, uh, I certainly think he... he can present arguments in a way that can be persuasive. Yeah, and I think and, it's I think the, the audience would have been responsive to anything, but I'd say contrast. Attack, with, yeah. contr- I'd say even contrast with another candidate. Yeah, I think those can be done, you know, at campaign events. But when the other candidates are all going to be there, I, th- I think the crowd would have been. They got, they got a little bit on this for uh, for Clinton on this. We'll get to this a little bit later. But if you're responding to a contrast, then that time the, the, the audience will you know will eat that up. Um, so I think that you know that's the one thing Edwards probably couldn't have done is gotten their contrast. So that's all he wants to do. Yeah. That's his only message for for New Hampshire through South Carolina. Then maybe it was a good decision to, if, if, just to keep his messages tight to not come. Um, maybe in that case, or if he didn't want to risk, you know, well, yeah. out organized. I'm just trying to see the upsides of why he wouldn't come. I, I understand but why he wouldn't want to come. At the same time, I, I'd say I don't think that message is going to be successful given the other candidates in the race, and I think that. Uh, if he wants to get back in the race, he's going to need a long shot at this time, and I think it's worth trying. You don't throw, you don't sit out plays when you need the sure, Hail Mary. Absolutely, you try. Agreed. Uh, um, but you know, let's look look at Hillary because you did mention something about responsiveness to contra- to contrasting statements. Uh, you had talked about this in your live blog, got yeah. some attention. What 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 really stood out in her speech, at least in terms of being newsworthy okay. uh, takeaways? Well, the, the, the news. What's take what. 